Hey everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a story. Um, I'm also going to tell you guys my thoughts on different fig synonyms, as people call them. Um, adaptations, groupings, um, types, categories, right? A lot of people like to group up, including myself, we like to group up many varieties of figs and put them all together into one category that we can then refer to and come back to at any time we want. I talk a lot about these categories, guys, these types, as I like to call them, in all of my videos. I mention this quite frequently, whether that's English brown turkey types, Celeste type, Hardy Chicago types, Adriatic types. There's so many of them that I have categorized and put into a uh, an archetype I guess is what you could call it of these figs that are maybe not genetically the same but are so similar that somebody like me with limited space a limited garden may not want to grow these figs because they're so similar so I'm gonna get into all the differences on that and how I what my opinion is on this whole thing because it seems to be a topic that comes up every year and it seems to be a topic that we just can't form an opinion on um, I feel like uh, fig growers serious fig growers are in a way like Egyptologists we're trying to figure out what happened in Egypt 10,000 years ago I mean not that extreme right we don't have the, like the uh, the scientific background that some of these Egyptologists have but we're trying to understand Things that are well above our, our pay grades, our education, um, and we'll just never know. I think that's really the, the most common similarity there is that we will just never know um, for sure. So let me tell you guys a little story and then we'll get into all the my thoughts on all the synonyms and all that. Um, let's say that there was a fig back in history, maybe 500 years ago. Maybe even longer, I'm not sure. But let's say 500 years ago, there was a fig called Hardy Chicago. Or it, it doesn't have a name. Let's just say it's called Hardy Chicago. And Hardy Chicago originated in, who knows, let's let's say it originated in, uh, in Italy or something, right? A high traffic area of Italy. I don't know. Some kind of area where there's lots of trade. Lots of traffic, lots of people from different countries, different walks of life would come and meet in this little mecca. And people would trade spices and they would trade food and they would trade plants. They would trade cuttings. And lots of people would trade fig cuttings. And that's what they did. They took Cardi Chicago that originated in Italy and they took that fig variety, that cutting with them in their travels brought them to different lands and planted them there you know that could happen of any any different scenario however you want it don't don't nitpick that scenario i just mentioned okay it could have happened a million and one different ways but that's the scenario we're going to go with just hypothetically right the point is they had taken this variety and planted it in different locations and by doing that having this variety now all across the world and because Hardy Chicago is a well-adapted variety, it is uh, it withstands a whole lot of adverse conditions like like rain. It's very hardy. It just seems to keep coming back year after year. It's a survivor, right? And because it's a survivor, it's able to withstand all these different climates. And over the years, however many years it's been since that variety has been planted there it has adapted just like any other fruit variety or vegetable variety uh even us right epigenetics right this is just how this stuff works um so slowly over time these things have improved made minor have have formed minor differences between them and then let's say we're now in more present times and let's say that uh, America was discovered and now people are really flooding in from Europe 
maybe not America was discovered, but a large influx of Italian Americans had come in from Italy and brought with them all these different Italian fig varieties. And these Italian fig varieties, guys, among the many that there were, many of them were hardy Chicago. That's a proven fact. And these hardy Chicago types were not all the same. Even though they may have been, this is my theory, they may have all been the same fig originally, but because they have been sent to different parts of the world, even different parts of Italy, in different microclimates, different macroclimates, there's a whole different host of climates throughout just Italy. And those figs have then adapted. And then by bringing them here, they have adapted even further. And now we're getting to the point where people like me are crazy and we have all these different fig varieties. We've, we've discovered all these different fig varieties. They all have different names. And we've put them all together, put the puzzle pieces together, and now we're seeing many, many varieties that are almost indistinguishable from each other. So much so that people are so passionate as to say that they're all the same, and some piece, people are so passionate as to say that they're very different. And there's a big controversy on this. Um, but that's my opinion on how this whole thing occurred, is that these are all minor adaptations of probably the same fig or maybe two very similar figs. And that's what we're seeing now in, in America is that there are many varieties. And I have put together a list, okay? If you go to my spreadsheet here, this is in the description of this video, you can go to the fig synonym tab down here, and this will explain kind of what all this means up here. And here's the hardy Chicago types that I'm referring to, and here's the list of them. I've counted at least 60. I know, I know for a fact there's more of them out there, but I've done a lot of research and I think I've gotten a good handle on this. And this is a great resource for new growers. For people deciding on what variety to grow, it can be very confusing. A lot of them are very similar. So I've offered you guys a lot of these resources. Another one I offer is the flavor groupings. This can also aid you guys in determining what variety of fig to get. You can determine that based on flavor, right? So this is one little way of doing it. But for me, I don't rely on this anymore because I know what the synonyms are. I know what fig is similar to other figs. Um, I don't need this. I don't need this to operate. You know what I'm saying? And most growers like me that have been doing this long enough don't need this as well. So here's where I think it gets a little hairy for a lot of people, and I want to clarify this. This is not a synonym list. Every single fig on this list is not 100% the same. I think in some scenarios, they may be. I think without genetic testing, we'll never know, right? We're kind of like the Egyptologists that just never know. Um, but I do believe that a, a lot of these and all of them within this grouping here are similar enough to the point where you may want to second guess getting a second one in that same category, right? So as an example, if I have black Greek, I would want to think twice about getting dark Portuguese. Okay, that's that's all I'm trying to say. I think that there is a percentage here. I don't know what that percentage is, but you know, these are certainly either 100% the same, but in most cases, I think most of these, like I said, in most cases, most of these are about 99% the same, 95% the same, 90% the same. Um, and that's in terms of like flavor, right? I'm not saying that they're the exact same fig. 90, they're 90% the same in terms of growing habits, right? Because they're certainly going to be quite different in growing habits, the productivity, the rain resistance, you know, they've adapted, right? They've adapted to certain areas. They've maybe gotten some extra hardiness as a result. Uh, maybe some better precocity. Maybe they ripen earlier in the season, right? 
But in terms of flavor and, and shape and size and kind of what the fig resembles to me, I would say these figs are very similar to each other. Um, there's no one out there really willing to deny that, right? If you visually look at the fig, you taste the fig, they're very similar to each other. And that's where I think this big debate is, right? The figs are certainly similar to each other, but then there's other people saying that they're 100% the same. And I think you need to find a nice little balance there somewhere in the middle. And I think that's where I'm at right now is that I don't believe they're all very different and I don't believe they're 100% the same, right? I think they're all very similar figs, but I think there's some minor adaptations between them that differentiate them and may, uh, may show us a better strain, a better variety that exists within Hardy Chicago that could be superior. I've certainly seen this firsthand, okay? To give you some good examples here, um, my Azores Dark, I believe, is a much better Hardy Chicago type. It's certainly very similar to a Hardy Chicago. It looks very similar. The leaf pattern's almost exact. The fig shape is pretty much exact. The only differences I've really seen is the skin color. It's more of a purple and less of a black um, when it's fully ripe. And also the flavor. It has more honey throughout the fig at the eye. Um, it also has a slightly different berry flavor to it. So in terms of taste, I've certainly realized that it's a different fig, which is great, right? That's what I want. I, I don't want to have 60 of these and them all being the same. I want to find the differences in here and figure out which one of these is, is actually worth having. Another one that I find to be quite different, but also similar is called white triana and white triana is one of these atriano types here and canadria here is a bread fig so how could canadria be similar to atriano well i think it has a similar flavor profile it certainly has the same leaf pattern um the same shape a lot of similarities are between all of these figs but this one i would say out of all of the categories i've mentioned or on this page here this has the largest differences between them and all of the large differences here point me towards white triana in that it has the the most intense and complex berry flavor that i've seen out of these i haven't seen many of these form at least in my climate or a similar climate form the dark red berry uh color that i'm looking for so you know, that's just another example. White Triana is another category within the categories that I think could be represented in some way. You know, Malta Black is another one, right? I have actually created a whole new separate category outside of the Hardy Chicago types here and labeled this one Malta Black because I think these are different enough that they should get their own little subcategory. So that's where I'm at, guys. And then this photo here I want to show you is a photo that my friend Tony at mountainfigs.net has taken. And I had grown many of these at one time, but after seeing Tony's photo, I realized that's probably just a big waste of my time. So he has a whole bunch of different varieties here lined up next to each other, and you can see there's almost... There's just very little difference between them. The major differences here that you're seeing is the size, uh, which is also very variable from year to year, fig to fig. Uh, the size of Hardy Chicago varies differently. The leaf pattern varies differently. It's quite a variable fig, which makes it so hard to compare and um, say definitively that these are the same or even different. Um, the shape is very different. The interior color may be different. I mean, there's so many variables to figs, guys. But really the only bigger differences you're seeing here is the level of ripeness and the size. You know, this one here is certainly more ripe than, say, this one. You know, this one here is certainly more ripe than all of these. But these are all different hardy Chicago types that have different names that we've all put together 
into these spreadsheets or into this grouping here of mine. And this is the this is the result here. And Tony has said that he couldn't really tell the difference between them in terms of flavor. Now, again, this is all up to opinion, right? Flavor is opinion. Where you stand on this whole debate is opinion, you know? Um, so I can't necessarily say he's wrong or right. I can't say that I'm wrong or right. But I can tell you, and most growers will agree, the large majority of them will agree, that these all taste very similar. And that it may not be worth it in your such your specific situation to grow all these different varieties here that I've listed, right? You may want to choose maybe one or two. I can tell you though, however, that Tony here has decided to keep all of these and he has planted them all out in his yard and he's made many copies of them because it is without a doubt the most well adapted, the hardiest, the best fig in my climate and his climate that performs in the ground. So just because there's so many of them with different names doesn't mean it's a complete waste, right? And it doesn't mean that we should be upset or you know sad about this or think we wasted money or time. Um, this is all just a part of growing figs. And now, uh, let me tell you my little progression here. I started out with maybe 10 or 15 different hardy Chicago types, unknowingly. And then I said, oh my God, I figured this out. They're all the same. I don't want them anymore. I just want one. I'm running out of space. Let's get rid of them all. And I kept maybe two or three. And then nowadays, uh, actually I only kept two, I think. And then now nowadays, I've actually somehow accumulated more over time. My curiosity has expanded on certain of these, certain varieties of these through the words of others, through clear uh, distinctions I've seen in photos. And it now is more obvious to me that these are adaptations and that there's more differences here that meets the eye. So for me, I'm now growing somewhere around eight, eight or nine of these different hardy Chicago types again, right? I'm back to almost that 15 number that I was at when I started. So you can kind of imagine here, you know, what's going on in this little realm. And I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope this made this clear and understandable because it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to somebody who's new. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, talk about this going on and I kind of wanted to put this video out there to help you guys understand the best way I can. This is truly the best information I know of uh, on this particular subject. I, I don't know if it gets really more complete than that. So, all right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this one. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Um, see you for the next video. Take care.